Hey guys, there's recently been quite a bit of confusion around chips and what just happened with the US sanctions that have been launched, I think on the 7th of October and how this might impact, for example, our EV companies like Tesla, NIO, Xpeng, but also like Chinese tech companies like let's say Alibaba and Baidu. And so I made some quick charts here because I think there's much confusion also in the media and in some online social media commentary around it. And I think it's not quite accurate. I'm not saying that I know everything about it. Um, I'm basically not a chip expert, but um, I think I can give you my opinion here. And then from there you can take it in terms of what you personally think of what will be the effects um, of, for example, technology companies from China. So first of all, we need to be aware that there are many different chips, especially when it comes to um, the latest smart EVs. And um, yeah, usually the media is just writing like, you know, there is a ban on chips. And so suddenly they assume that um, you know, China cannot get any chips anymore and not, for example, produce cars. But if we look at this, for example, here, um, what's actually going into the car are kind of, if you want, um, two separate types of chips. So one would be, for example, in NIO's case, that would be the NVIDIA Orin chip, which is part of the NIO supercomputer Atom. So that one is for autonomous driving capabilities or assisted driving functionalities. Um, lots of compute power. I think I've heard something like this is like 100 times of a PlayStation in terms of power that's going uh, in the supercomputer. And um, yeah, that's provided by NVIDIA. So that's the partner for NEO there. And um, another type of chip would be like the normal chips, like the logic boards, um, the controllers, also memories and uh, those kind of things that are kind of arbitrary, uh, very normal chips. And these are actually the chips that have been affected mostly uh, by the um, chip shortage. So these were um, many hundreds, thousands of such chips go into a car, for example, to open the windows and you know doing little of these functionalities that were not available due to supply constraints. And therefore, if you just don't have one of these chips, you cannot finish the car. Now, I made this line here because there's a, essentially a separation to some sort of other chips for example, um, the A100, that one is by NVIDIA as well, which is a GPU, um, so a graphic processing unit um, that is being used in server farms, mostly for um, large scale um, compute um, mechanisms, for example, for artificial intelligence operations like uh, let's say image recognition, um, image labeling, training of algorithms. So these are clusters of many, many different servers. So imagine just a couple of computers right next to each other, all of them which have uh, one of those GPUs or even more of them in them. And then they are in parallel and then they compute all of this stuff. And so on the left hand side, everything that's going into the car currently is not really impacted by some of these sanctions um, and import um, uh, bans there. Um, but um, there might be indirect effects though, because um, what has now just happened, like um, for example, US citizen cannot um, resume their work in Chinese uh, chip companies or uh, some companies need some sort of licenses, which they have gotten granted already. But uh, what I'm saying there is there might be some current um, disruptions to um, the operational modes of these companies. For example, the maker of a controller or a memory chip, something like this may currently face some distractions, but that will be felt along the entire supply chain, um, not specific to any products, not specific to China, only um, these are just some of those operational hurdles. But the chips and the work that they're doing is not really banned. They can just continue to do what they have done. And so there is not really a shortage um, of those chips that are going into the car to be expected. Also the um, Nvidia Orin is not part of any sanction list. So Neo can just get them and get their super computers ready also for autonomous driving. So there is no issue around this currently. Of course, there might be in the future. I'm not saying that um, you know, the Biden administration will even go further and you know, prevent um, Chinese companies from getting such kind of chips. But currently, um, there shouldn't be an issue with that. On the other hand, the restrictions that are currently in place are straight 
going to such high power supercomputer chips and GPUs like um, this uh, NVIDIA A100 and AMD chips because they can actually be used for military operations. And so while I'm criticizing the US sanctions because I think they're not really smart, I think they will accelerate um, China's uh, capabilities to create such chips by them, uh, on their own, um, I do think we must also be you know, um, kind of well balanced here and say that currently that the aim of those bans and sanctions are really targeted at, you know, that military is not getting their hands on those chips because, of course, they can be used um, for, let's say, make simulations about nuclear bombs or whatever, right? So um, that's what should be prevented. However, in NEO's case, well, do they have such server farms? Yes, they do have some, for example, for R&D, um, but for R&D they're using different chips, so these are not banned. Um, and uh, they also have um, yeah, image labeling um, operations and things like that for autonomous driving, uh, for which NEO, for example, said they have already all the chips that they need. And in fact, they even could get a license if they want, or at least they could apply for it and should actually be able to get a license for importing such kind of chips. But NVIDIA and AMD both already said that they can also um, supply their clients with alternatives because these are not the only chips that can be used for that. In fact, um, there can be different chips from their own portfolios, uh, which they are confident they can supply in the future. But also there will be a new trend towards Chinese homebrew, homemade stuff, like, uh, for example, in the area of server farms, Biren uh, B100 will be more capable even than those NVIDIA chips, but so far hasn't been mass manufactured, but it's supposed to start soon. Then the Jaguar semiconductor GPUs, these are chips that I've mentioned before, invested, for example, by Sequoia China, by Tencent, by Neo Capital, and they are um, creating, for example, DPUs. So these are very specific chips being used in such applications. So expect that they come up with their own chips and on for example what's going into the car um, there are also alternatives for example Ro horizon robotics which is a chinese startup that is also doing such kind of similar to the um, nvidia orin um, fsd chips if you will so autonomous driving chips that can do all those um, compute power operations within the car so there might be actually chinese chips coming up very soon that can be used by chinese startups but not only chinese startups and that's also one big news Volkswagen invested more than 2 billion US dollars into Horizon Robotics, which in my point of view is a brilliant move and a very interesting startup in this field of um, AI, of robotics, of autonomous driving chips like the Journey 3 and the latest one is actually Journey 5. So very interesting move by Volkswagen, which came one week after those sanctions by the US. So as I know Volkswagen from inside and outside, um, you know, working with them, I can tell you they're very, very conservative and it's already a big move for them to actually um, you know, buy stakes in the company. And if they have got one more week time to you know, elaborate on the facts of the sanctions um, and if they would come to the conclusion that Horizon Robotics would actually be unable to produce their chips for autonomous driving in the future because of the effects of these sanctions, then I'm pretty sure they would have been, um, yeah, they would have bailed out of this deal. But the fact that they didn't do that um, tells me that they have done their due diligence and that they are of the opinion that actually um, the effects will not be there um, because China, in fact, is already leapfrogging to new technologies. For example, also in the area of uh, semiconductors, um, China has now the seven nanometers technologies. According to my knowledge, SMIC is actually able to do this without those ASML um, uh, European manufacturing tools. Instead, they are using older lithography tools and still can do it and produce seven nanometer chips um, that are actually um, yeah, only South Korea and Taiwan can do it, not even the US. So the fact that the US is you know, pulling out their uh, employees there, I'm not sure how that really is going to affect um, those you know, advancements from the Chinese side in the very long run. In the short, possibly will have some effects on those supply chains. And then once again, that's not good for inflation either. And it might create new uh, chip shortages and supply bottlenecks. So definitely this is uh, something to watch and it's something to be concerned about, um, especially going forward, if the US will make this even more aggressive or widen those kind of 
things but currently that's what I just want to say in this video here um, there's a very big difference between what's going into the car and yeah um, what is actually restricted from being used so uh, there has been uh, some auto translated um, Twitter threads even by China analysts out there who used um, not accurate um, ways of describing that also autonomous driving chips would be banned and, and that's purely not the fact I, I told him and he later on actually even deleted the tweet and so for now that's not um, the case and so um, too much uh, not accurate coverage um, there in my point of view about this latest issue there but maybe you have better ideas about that and let me know that in the comments when you guys are watching and see you in the next video